full of knowledge that sometimes four hours will be less for us and therefore since we have a lot to cover i will take the liberty of making it quicker than you would like tangential that is my weakness <laughs> no, no no absolutely fine because we we love the uh so you you can gauge the person's ability from even his tangents that he takes okay so let's begin and we will begin with gout and uh, gout as nilesh also tells me and i think all of you agree all those who don't have ball pens there are ball pens there all those who do not have notebooks are notebooks are there on the table as nilesh said gout is one disease which can be up to a great extent managed by the generalist and uh, we will we'll discuss gout and we will discuss gout in a fairly random order where we will go back and forth between diagnosis treatment investigations etc so first of all we will discuss acute episode of gout a patient presents to the gp with mono articular arthritis which joint mono articular arthritis should not be thought of as gout i think anything in the uh, in the upper limb uh typically no definitely not hip knee ankle and foot yes but it should be an acute attack rather than a continuous disease especially if it's the first episode if the patient has had no history then only an acute attack or a uh, then only it should be an acute attack but if the patient has had an history it could be not an acute attack and a continuous uh, disease like for a month or so but the first episode of gout is should be an ideally should be an acute attack out of the blue kind of attack. out of the blue so usually what i ask the patient remember your first attack was it very sudden was it the most painful attack of your life were you not able to walk for one or two days and did it go away in two three days if 90% of the answers are yes i mean did your foot get very inflamed very sudden very acute and have you had similar attack like this if the answer is yes this is gout unless proved otherwise you don't need any other test it is a very important lesson to learn for us if a person comes with mono articular shoulder region pain often the orthopedic surgeon or us we will think of hyperuricemia as the cause of shoulder single pain but lower limb is more likely to be gout than the upper limb so what could be say for example a unilateral twist joint sudden acute pain i still won't think out you won't think out can you give me one thought that you will have instead of gout reactive arthritis that would so, be a first yeah thing. yeah and and it's very common for example i will still think of chikungunya especially if there is a fever episode so if there is no foot or knee attack acute in the past a sudden wrist swelling will never be gout so this is important because this is misdiagnosed very very frequently shoulder wrist etc as gout when they occur acutely you must think of differential diagnosis here rather than gout in fact in fact an acute attack of wrist i will think rheumatoid because you can have a palindromic rheumatoid where they can have attacks of arthritis where you can have wrist shoulder anything which is involving upper limbs in the form of attack i will think of this being a part of palindromic arthritis which is basically arthritis uh, palindromic i don't know if you uh, understand the word palindrome basically it's a word which reads forwards and backwards the same for example stat for example malayalam so if you read the forward and backwards spelling it's the same it basically means repetition so there is an arthritis uh, diagnosis in rheumatology which is known as palindromic arthritis you will have patients who come to you ki mera sirf aaj ke din wrist sujega it will become very inflamed and i will not be able to move that joint it will settle month later three days later five days later depending on which stage they are my shoulder will get stiff it will subside one day my knee will get stiff it will subside one day my mcp joint will get stiff it will subside it's a very clear history but more often than not whenever they are coming to you in the clinic there is no joint inflamed so there are two ways to go about it label them as psycho which most of the time happens or you listen to them and make it sure ki that happened and it was very bad Many a times they will give you photographs. कि देखो मेरा MCP joint इतना swollen हो गया था and it subsided. Now the GP is and everybody has got very good. Everybody gets RA factor and anti-CCP. 
Many a times, these are patients who are going to develop RA. One of my sisters had uh, three years of palindromic phase before she went into full blown RA. When I say full blown, basically the swelling is continuous now. You have a continuous swelling. You don't have attack. Attacks are very painful because it's sudden onset. It's extremely painful. Continuous swelling joints are still less painful than attack. So sometimes it is much more painful. And they, these patients can be RA factor anti-CCB positive or mm -hmm. RA factor negative anti-CCB can be greater than 500. And they will develop. They will develop RA at some point. This is one group of cases. There is one group of palindromic arthritis where all markers are negative. But the history is very, very, very classical. So, in both cases, I will offer methotrexate. So, we will of course be discussing rheumatoid arthritis therapy in detail. But basically, aapko ravi, kuch problem? Uh. Gout is a, gout also is a palindromic arthritis. But you have a pathophysiology which is very different. When I'm using a word, and that is limited to foot in the initial few years, but or lower limb. But when I'm talking of palindromic arthritis, it behaves more like an RA-like arthritis where you have involvement of almost all the joints Multiple of the body, joints. like wrist, like MCP, which are common RA joints, basically. So any hand joint involvement, usually you think of RA and psoriatic arthritis as the most common difference. Uh, continuing with gout, so a person with monoarticular arthritis comes to the GP, say has a classic uh, right foot metatarsophalangeal first grade 2 arthritis. Uh, we see the patient, we know the pain relieving modalities in acute gout. I suppose we all know that the pain relieving modalities are maybe eyes, NSAIDs, colpacin, steroids. So these are the modalities that the family physician knows. and. But what investigation should they start and what modality should they start? So first, uh, what investigation should they send in a person who they think is an acute gout? What blood tests, what x-ray, what should they send? So I will usually not send any investigations. I will just say that you do, especially if you are sure that there are no comorbidities. I am only worried about the creatinine if I am uh, going to give NSAID. But really it doesn't matter because five days of NSAID, even if the creatinine is, unless it's a known bad CKD patient, it won't matter. So I will usually give NSAIDs plus colchicine and or maybe a small dose of steroid for three to five days and the attack will subside. And thereafter I will uh, order uric acid, B12, thyroid, basically all the risk factors which can increase the uric acid. So I think what he is saying is, Serum uric acid per se as a diagnostic test for an acute attack of gout is unnecessary and probably useless since gout is often associated with other metabolic disorders. You should check for diabetes and you should check renal function, etc. But there is no specific test needed. You don't need to do I the x-ray. I like to rule out a D2 and thyroid deficiency because okay. that can increase your uric acid. So that is not a risk factor. You still don't have a gout attack. But your uric acid may be slightly lowered if you have a normal B12 and a TSH. Okay. I didn't know this about B12. Low B12 predisposes. Yeah, because it causes uh, cell turnover. subclinical hemolysis. So, so, yeah, so RBC turnover is greater in B12 deficiency. Hence, uric acid production is greater in B12 deficiency. And in what vegetarians, pure vegetarians or pure uh, vegetarians, non-alcoholics with gout, uh, it, it could be genetic, but always be very, very, are we missing some hematological management? Uh, because I have had two patients who developed myeloma three months down the line. So maybe it was being precipitated by the hemolysis of the cancer cells. I don't know. Uh, but uh, polycythemia and multiple myeloma do increase the risk of uh, hyperuricemia and gout. So, I'm not saying you start thinking myeloma in everyone, but keep your eyes and ears open. If they have a persistently elevated ESR, I will uh, probably look it's for a hematological issue. Uh, this is where, where there are no risk factors. Uh, but, but having said that, there are patients who have pure genetic gout without any risk factors uh, at 30, 40 years of age also. And as we said before, premenopausal females don't think of 
gout unless the patient say for example is on hydrochlorothiazide any secondary gout may be may occur happen in premenopausal thiazides diuretics in general are important still, causes still, still not seen not seen i have seen only uh, two gouts before the age of uh, 50 in females in females okay. one 19 year old one 40 year old and i strongly feel they must have this uh, I don't know if you know of a uh, deficiency called HPRT deficiency. So that deficiency, I will not go into this, this thing. So basically, we think the most uh, gouts before 30 or 40 years of age have a deficiency of enzyme called HPRT, which uh, increases uh, urine turnover and increases the yeast cell. So these are the patients who come with gout at very early stage. Correct. Okay. So Why don't I think it's change? estrogen. Uh, it's estrogen which is uh, protective. Protective. Nothing in rheumatology is hundred percent. We still we still don't know what how methotrexate works. Uh, but uh, it is estrogen. We don't know, sir, why lupus uh, is nine is to one female, female to male, male ratio. So everything is logically speculative in rheumatology. There is nothing. Uh, most things are not definitive in rheumatology. It's mostly estrogen, though, because it has to be estrogen because premenopausal females don't have gout. Postmenopausal females have as much as gout as males, but that statement does not seem to be hold true in um, non-Caucasians. For some reason, either we are underdiagnosing gout in female, or we don't have that much gout in Indian females. At least I don't see it, and I, I do keep a good watch out for gout in Indian. I don't remember often I have a. I have a gout female patient. At this point, I I am <laughs> difficult to think Not of even post menopause. So this is important because gender becomes very important in diagnosing. So SLE suspect in females much much more than males. Gout suspect in males more than females. Okay, you were saying about therapeutic modalities that you would start and say chocolatesin. So uh, can you can you give us a guideline in which patient to start only colchicin? Only NSAIDs, only steroids, or a combination. Gout attacks are very responsive to drugs, so uh, you have to give good pain relief. Always use two things at least, okay. and if you use all three, it's fine. So my standard prescription will be, let's say, an approximate five hundred BD, or whatever, whatever NSAID you like. Even if combi plan, it doesn't matter. But use different doses for five days, plus colchicine point five MD BD. now i don't know what is the teaching of uh, most gps who jo tha colchicine tab tak dete raho jab tak diarrhea ho jata hai is is absolutely out of uh, the bin right now now the standard trial which came was when you give colchicine 0.5 or the trial was 0.6 mg bd the 0.6 mg is not available in india so 0.5 mg bd for 3 to 5 days can subside an attack and it can prevent an another attack so i always give colchicine unless and until the patient is not already so my standard prescription is one nsaid plus gout nil most of the times i get patients who are 10th year into their gout so the attacks are very very severe and they are longer so i add a bit of steroid also and i may give it for 10 12 days but but the first attack of gout will go away in 48 to 72 hours in most patients without treatment also so it Doesn't matter. I never see first attack of gout. It will be always you and you who will see first attack of gout. I have hardly seen a patient with gout in initial five years of their disease. I always see them when they are absolutely worse. So the family physician will uh, give the pain relief. It is said that after you have relieved the pain and the swelling has gone down, you should continue the therapy for some more time. Is that true? And how long should you continue? Uh, suppressive therapy. So I think uh, what sir is talking about giving. Uh, can I give an analogy? Absolutely. So I always say that uh, gout. This is not not my analogy, but I love this analogy. Uh, it was or some voice from guy. I don't hmm. remember. So uh, gout is like mastics. Uh, basically, uh, when mastics light up, mastics are like uric acid. You have uric acid or mastic deposition into the joint. They light up. You have a fire. You have an attack. Now, when you have fire, your job is not to remove the mastic. Your job is to douse the fire. 
Okay, you have doused the fire by anisette by colchicin whatever. Now the second thing your job is, ki wo mastics should be wet so that you don't get an another attack. Okay, so dousing fire with anisette steroids or colchicin. Now keep the mastics wet. You can give anisette continuously, or steroids continuously, or colchicin continuously. So these three drugs do both. They douse the fire. and they make the mastics wet or they prevent another fire but obviously what is safer in the long run is colchicin so what i will do is anisette steroids de diya anisette steroids hata diya i will continue the colchicin 0.5 mg bp okay that will keep the mastics wet so that you don't have another fire and then you start removing the mastics with urate lowering therapy which can be done after 2 3 weeks also because if you start removing the mastics earlier they will rub against each other and cause another fire so you should not give a urate lowering therapy at the start you first douse the fire pour more water and then try to remove the mastics i think i, yeah, I think this was a brilliant analogy i think uh, it's very clear what he is saying i'll just repeat it you first give what is called as pain relieving therapy after giving pain relief therapy you continue the pain relief therapy some for some weeks that is colchicin he says is the safest for example to give for several weeks and after two or three weeks start lowering the uric acid in the serum with febiglustat or allopurinol whichever he will tell us and how, when do you stop colchicin can you continue for six months yeah we can give for three to six months uh, now i don't know uh, how well versed you, you are with the history of gout uh, can i use a pen and paper okay so you can obviously see i am not very good at drawing so uh, the gout attacks uh, are are follow this pattern you will have one attack today you will have no other attack for one or two years or even 10 years you will have second attack you will not have another attack for one or two or three or four years this will happen in two three attacks some patients may right from the second attack or right from fourth or fifth attack we start having more treatment attack okay now remember the attack is acute but it will always come down in one or two days okay so this is an acute phase of gout which is intermittent then you are having silent phases of gout and suddenly your gout attacks will keep on increasing because the uric acid load in the body is still increasing so your uric acid was 9 it is still depositing into your joint so at some point the fires the fire ignition will start happening more frequently what will happen at some point maybe after fifth attack sixth attack or tenth attack or maybe after 5 to 10 years of the first attack which is when i see most of my gout patients and where the gp fail is they will start having attacks which will start lasting longer they will start having attacks which will not come down to baseline sir pehla attack दो दिन में चला गया था डॉक्टर ने दवाई दिया चला गया था डॉक्टर दवाई नहीं देता तो भी चला जाता था बट अब जो अटैक आता है पंद्रह दिन रहता है बीस दिन रहता है पच्चीस दिन रहता है पहले एक टो में ही होता था अब दोनों टो में होता है पहले एक ही जॉइंट में होता था अब जैसे ही दवाई लिया एक दो दिन चला जाएगा पर तीसरे दिन वापस आ जाता है पहले सिर्फ टो में होता था अब एंकल में भी हो रहा है पहले सिर्फ टो में होता था अब नी में भी हो रहा है सर पहले अटैक आके एक एक साल चला जाता था पर सर अब जाता ही नहीं है पेन कंटिन्यूस हो गया पहले अटैक सिर्फ फुट में आता था अब अटैक हैंड्स में भी आ रहा है सो द लॉन्गर यू लेफ्ट लीव द यूरिक एसिड अबाउ सेवन इन अ गाउट पेशेंट नॉट अटिक पेशेंट इन अ गाउट पेशेंट द अटैक विल डेफिनेटली इंक्रीज दे विल गेट लॉन्गर दे विल स्प्रेड अपर्स and patient will be in continuous agony the intensity of pain may decrease slightly as i have shown it is not very acute but it will last longer and it will not touch the baseline and this is a graph which is very well uh, described in textbook 
तो दिस इज हाउ गाउट इज सो यहाँ पे आप कुछ भी कर लो पेशेंट ट्रीटमेंट छोड़ देगा The 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 thing is 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 you you have to to counsel the patient 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 at at this this stage. stage. chronic now take it I have never been able to convince the gout patient to continue their urate lowering therapy in this stage because who is going to take drugs with five years of no symptoms? But ideally you should be telling him to take his uric acid lowering drug uh, not after first attack. It's okay. If first or second attack में ना पांच साल का difference हो सकता है So the rheumatologist now say it doesn't matter. Even if you start urate lowering therapy after second third attack, the benefits may still be the same. So, uh, in fact, we are told by textbooks that one of the criteria for starting urate lowering is two attacks per year or something like that. Yes, yes, yes. So the whole point is: is there any advantage of giving a urate lowering therapy initially? There is some evidence that if you start with the first attack and the patient persists, he may require a lifelong lower dose of allopurinol. But even after second third attack, that dose will remain the same. But the moment he goes into this phase, na, his lifelong dose requirement of allopurinol will be slightly much higher because the uric acid has deposited into body, so it will be difficult to remove it. So maybe at this point he will have survived on 100 milligram allopurinol lifelong. But at this point, he may require 300 milligram lifelong. Only thing he has done good is maybe avoided five years of 100 milligram of allopurinol. But ultimately, what jitna allopurinol higher or higher dose may cumulative dose will be much higher. So uh, I think any any yeah. So so whenever you are talking about gout, uh, the biggest thing is everything is uh, okay during the first attack actually first attack me if you if you show me a patient whose first attack the uric acid was normal i will uh, put a question mark on the diagnosis of gout because usually the first attack me uric acid is high it's during this this phase when you have attack uric acid tends to be normal because the uric acid is gone into the joint uh, i don't use uric acid to A diagnosed gout. I use the attack, and there is one more test. You can aspirate the joint and send for crystal examination. Uh, there is a there is a uh, if you remove the fluid, you have to send it for polarizing microscopy because gout crystals are transparent. It's very difficult to observe them under a uh, normal microscope. Good uh, pathology scan because it's a very uret shaped uh, needle shaped crystal. You have to send for polarizing microscopy. There is second more option available. It is known as a DEM CT scan, DEM scan, which is used many a time by nephrologists. It's available in Mumbai. I think uh, obviously it is available with picture this by Jamkhare. I send uh, patients there, uh, and I think there is one machine in Lila Vati. I have never sent to Lila Vati. But again, the, the problem with DEM scan is the sensitivity drops in the initial attack. So the initial attacks either I send a fluid sample, which is almost Not feasible because so many such fluid nickel ta nii hai, and uh, I have been very disappointed with uh, polarizing microscopy in two labs I have sent because even in crystal clear gout patients the reports have come negative. So and I know how to do a polarizing microscopy because our training had that. So I have a vision that at some point I have a polarizing microscopy at my clinic and I will myself remove the fluid, put it on the slide and see it. It's a two minute job. So uh, but but. Having said that, 99% patients, I don't need any investigation. Dr. Shukla was asking for all of you is that after the first attack, because serum uric acid can be normal, how do you decide to start urate lowering therapy? No, no, no. In, what are the targets? In, in between gout attacks, if the uric acid is normal, you should question the diagnosis of gout. Okay. So in between attacks, you should always document one high level. In, yes. If it is a gout, patient. I always ask the patient what was your first uric acid level documented. If he says below six, I start questioning the diagnosis of gout or even six point five. Usually, gout patients will have above eight or nine. So even seven, I start questioning whether they really had gout because very uncommon to develop a gout at a consistent uric acid level of seven. But you have to be very precise because many a times they ha may have been given febuxostat and it brings down uric acid very fast. Okay. Uh, just again, staying with the acute attack, 
one of the best remedies for acute monoarticular gout is intraarticular steroid can a family physician give intraarticular steroid there is no need of it no this, this is all us based data you don't really need in us na you to you uh, in us the colchicine is patented the colchris one tablet costs 5 dollar rupees in india it is 5 rupees tablet so i don't think we need intraarticular steroid unless and until uh, really really speaking with a very bad knee i don't remember when i gave an intraarticular in the last 10 years i don't remember for a gout attack almost every gout attack has subsided with three days of nsaid steroid and colchicine most people don't give colchicine properly that is the biggest problem give colchicine 0.5 mg bd for 10 15 days most attack will go away The traditional teaching, at least in uptodate.com or Harrison, if you are using colchicine as a single drug, is to stack one after one hour and then TDS. Is that a dose or no? They have, so? they found uh, in a very this is a landmark trial in gout that 0.5 or 0.6 milligram BD for three to five days is as good as anything else. Okay. More even, even as a single drug. even BD dose can cause diarrhea. significant diarrhea. So even OD dose is fine. Doesn't matter. It is very beautiful drug. The way it works, it it prevents an attack. Your your first, if your patient says na ki attack khatam hoke vapas aaya, colchicine to dena hi hai. Ab kuch mat do usko. It doesn't matter. Colchicine 0.5 milligram BD de rahe ho, aapka fan ho jaye. This is this is the only thing I do in this phase. All the patient stops. Colchicine 0.5 BD, 15 din lena. वो खुश होके आएगा फिर अगला भाषण देंगे दैट इज द होल थिंग होल पॉइंट क्रक्स ऑफ द बॉडी आई हैव आई हैव ट्रीटेड व्हीलचेयर बाउंड पेशेंट्स आई हैड अ पेशेंट होम फोर पेशेंट ब्रॉट हिम ऑन अ व्हीलचेयर अ गाउट पेशेंट मतलब इतना ज्यादा जॉइंट्स इन्फ्लेम थे देयर वर 10 जॉइंट्स इन्फ्लेम सो मच सो दैट आई फर्स्ट थॉट दिस इज रूमेटॉइड बट समहाउ आई वेंट इनटू द हिस्ट्री एंड इट स्टार्टेड विद द फुट जॉइंट देयर वाज अ 20 ईयर हिस्ट्री दिस वाज अ 50 ईयर ओल्ड पेशेंट हु बिकेम व्हीलचेयर बाउंड and he started gout at 25 he was just given 10 days of steroid 0.5 mg of gout in 3 weeks he came walking to me four people had brought him on wheelchair from godbandar to mira road gokhad hospital and so much so that the whole family now comes to me unfortunately the patient died of heart attack one year down the line but the whole family remembers ki aapne usko khada kiya tha jisko ki koi khada nahi kar paya i just gave him colchicine but i made sure it was gout not other arthritis because it looked like rheumatoid at that point and we gave him proper treatment so uh, now any question on acute gout so that i will go to urate lowering therapy now i think sir will i will just come to urate lowering therapy Uh, he is asking will there be a tapering of colchicine dose after the first 10 15 days and how long may be you give many sir you need to give only for 3 5 days so remember uh, uh, the mastic sweat theory is very relevant when you are 5 years down the line you don't get repeated attacks in the 5 years so aap gout mil 3 din bhi deke de doge chalega and you if you start elurid lowering therapy slowly na they don't get repeated attacks but by the nature of the disease because it is asymptomatic and very asymptomatic for longer periods for first 5 10 years this continuous gout mil has to be used in patients who are into later stages of gout इन द फर्स्ट अटैक ना आप तीन दिन दो पांच दिन दो वैसे भी एक अटैक के बाद शायद आपके पास आने ही नहीं वाला Acute attack and urate lowering therapy. Now, now the uh, concept is it doesn't matter if you are giving colchicine, and you have explained the patient that you may have another attack while you are starting urate lowering therapy. You can use the first opportunity to start urate lowering therapy, but don't give only urate lowering. Give colchicine along. Give with. colchicine along with it, especially if the patient is in this phase, and because everybody does that, we get more patients. So you. Okay, so we'll go to urate lowering therapy. Anything?
we will we will come to that we will be come discussing low back ache is called chising not given in any patient except intolerance obviously previous intolerance completely to all chising ah Pregnancy. I don't remember offhand, but uh, just be cautious Email. when you are giving colchicin with statins and clofibrate. Uh, I don't know. You use for clofibrate. So the only colchicin I I remember is with CYP three A four inhibitors like I clarithromycin. I was going to come that. So whenever you are using colchicin for long term, I tell the patients that if you are using QTC prolonging drug clarithromycin. There are case reports of deaths in US. Uh, we still don't know how significant it is, but medical legally, it is. It it can be pulled up by someone, and you can in the court of law, you will lose the argument because people have won court cases over CTC prolongation and death, supposedly because of even azithromycin. So I am a bit wary of that. That is the biggest problem because azithromycin is very common. Any patient on long term colchicin, three or four drugs that you don't give. One is clarithromycin, one is ciprofloxacin, uh, sorry, moxifloxacin, which has the greatest QT prolongation yeah, amongst phenolones, yeah. and maybe uh, azithromycin, of course, and maybe other QT prolonging drugs, which in in our general practice are few. Itraconazole also probably is not to be given in a patient on colchicin. Yeah, and cimetidine they quote, but I don't think they have cimetidine. We don't have. Statins are okay. Uh, is, statins, sorry, sorry, statins and clofibrate can increase the risk of rhabdomyolysis. There are sp- spon- uh, there are some there are there is potentially higher chances of rhabdomyolysis. So what I do because many of them have comorbidities, I ask them to check their CTKs and report any muscle pain. Uh, generally, I don't need to, but. I I I started. I have started being cautious in the last three four years because it has started coming into literature. But generally, generally it is very 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 safe, even for six to twelve months. Do you wish anything? He is asking if uric lowering therapy can be given in spurts whenever the uric acid is high. Uh, sir, वो patient वैसे ही by default कर लेगा. The compliance is never good in patients. So there are I have yet to see a patient who has continued his uric lowering therapy even after second attack. Yes. Uh, we will... You have to keep it below six most of the times is what I will say. We will come to uric lowering therapy. Yeah. yeah. He's asking what two important drugs that cause hyperuricemia are thiazide diuretics or diuretics in general and pyrazinamide. And we start AKT in patient, then we often get hyperuricemia. It's I think by default pyrazinamide causes hyperuricemia. Can it cause symptomatic hyperuricemia? I very think frequently? I think uh, most drug induced hyperuricemia pain is not due to hyperuricemia. Not I think it is. It is okay. the drug itself that is causing the arrhythmia. Okay. So even if you give febuxostat, uh, there may be a strong placebo effect because almost everybody gives an NSAID along with it. So many a times patients say that my uric acid come over and my pain got better does not mean he had gout. It could mean that the patient got an NSAID along with it, which is almost always the case. The patient remembers the level of uric acid. Patient does not remember that he was given an NSAID. Pyrazinamide itself can lead to arthritis. So in such patients, my I don't like uret lowering therapy. I think in India we use so much uret lowering therapy because of a simple reason. Because when febuxostat came into market, every drug company saw an opportunity because very cheap drug. And even if you give it for three four rupees, the profit margin is close to two hundred three hundred percent. There are ten thousand brands of febuxostat in Mumbai <laughs> or in India, and everybody is pushing. And we already have a psychology in India that every pain is related to uric acid. So these two things combined into a potential malpractice of giving giving uret lowering therapy for every point of pain. That will bring me to one question: Is symptomatic hyperuricemia one of the biggest mistakes that all of us make? 
if we see a complete health checkup report, see a uric acid of 8.5, and we will, without symptoms, start uric lowering therapy. So tell us in which asymptomatic hyperuricemia will you start some uric lowering therapy? Actually, if you see hard evidence, there is no no case for starting uric lowering therapy without doubt, except except CKD. for not even for CKD, except for malignancy, so where you have a tumor lysis syndrome. You are talking of an acute tumor lysis where you have to anticipate and give an uric lowering therapy. The CKD patients. Receiving, I have a meta-analysis published. We did say that there may be a positive effect, but the quality of studies was very low. So meta-analysis is many studies coming together and we making an analysis of it. But each individual studies are pathetically low quality. They're of low quality, so you can't make a good judgment. Now there is a well-published trial in NEGM which said that giving allopurinol to even early CKD patients and late CKD patients did not make any difference into progression of CKD. I have asked this to an nephrologist and everybody seems to say we, we, give, we give, we think the evidence is still evolving, which I still agree. The CKD may apne de diya, it's fine, but otherwise there is no reason why anybody should receive a hypouricemic therapy without actually being clear of drought. See, why are we giving medicines? You have to understand that. We are giving medicines to make patients feel better and to decrease their risk. Okay? So even if you suppose have a cholesterol of, let's say, LDL of 150 at, let's say, 30, your, your risk scores are not high. You are not, you are not supposed to give them fat. There is no advantage of giving a urate-lowering therapy on any parameter, at any age, for any indication, without actually having gum. Okay, people say that hypertension is associated with, it is associated with raised uric acid, but there is no trial which has shown that lowering uric acid decreases the BP medication. Okay. The India mindset is to give urate lowering therapy for increased uric acid and that mindset is not replicated across any other country. I was in UK. I never saw GPs doing uric acid. So the textbook recommendation of the uric acid more than 11 asymptomatic, we should give. Is that also uh, not evident? Now, now, yeah, so sir has made a very pertinent point. Suppose your uric acid is above 9. There is one or two guidelines, the Japanese guideline, which say you can consider it. But frankly speaking, sir, if gout has not developed, as long as you have told the patient that you have a sudden gout attack, se chalu kar denge, there is no advantage of preemptively starting. The only reason why we say that 10 to 11 you should consider starting because they will likely develop gout in 50% of cases. Uh, so, above 9, above 9 uric acid, there is a 20% chance of developing gout every year. But kya pata usko 10 saal nahi ho to, are you going to really give a urate lowering therapy for 10 years for no symptoms? See, you should treat diseases prophylactically if there is an advantage to treat it. Okay, you don't treat prostate cancers also because there is no advantage of treating prostate cancer early in the stage. So gout is like that. There is no advantage of lowering uric acid when you have not developed gout. In fact, you should not lower uric acid even after first attack also. But that is also controversial now. Shayad aap second third attack bhi rakh sakte ho. So, gout attack hone se pehle urate lowering therapy does not make any sense evidence. So, one thing is we are overusing uh, alloprinol and febuxostat. I, I stop table. more febuxostats in a day than I start. I don't see gout patients that frequently. I see one gout patient in a month probably. So you, have to, you have to de-prescribe without any fear. If, uh, if, if you send patients to me, I will write a note. There is hyperuricemia, but I have not found evidence of gout. Very politely, my sentence will be kindly consider stopping uh, febuxostat or allopurinol. I write it to one GP every day. Yeah. I can't change that, sir. There is no evidence. 
No, you can't, you, you can't argue that. I recently uh, put it on next. Twitter. Yeah. So there was one cardiologist who kept on saying, you know, no, it decreases cardiovascular risk. I'm like, quote an article, there is no article. Actually. They have done a trial of allopurinol in cardiovascular outcomes also, it failed. And it was a very good trial. It was a very good trial published in NEGM with a large cohort of patients, it failed. They have done a trial of colchicine also in cardiovascular risk, it has also failed. Okay, uh, I'll just summarize a little bit here. Uh, urate lowering therapy is of two principal varieties, two principles of allopurinol and febrizostat. And there is, of course, uh, there is another drug used called probenicid, which we will not go into. So, allopurinol, uh, febrizostat are xyloric and febrizostat has many brand names. We as GPs will rarely need to start either of these drugs. Give me just one or two reasons why a GP will start allopurinol or febrizostat. One or two reasons why they will think of starting. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Acute attack you cannot give. So he said acute attack, first acute attack, don't give. So let us find out when would a GP start febrizostat or allopurinol and which one of these two should he start? I think... Uh... Whenever the patient is into a chronic phase, at that time I, I may start it at the first go itself. Um, especially if having recurrent attack. But even then I will not start it because my job is first to stop the attack. Uh, and uh, uh, so I will just start, I'll give a situation. Family physician, she finds that the patient has come to her after two, maybe four attacks over two years of acute gout. That patient has currently no symptoms, but documented uric acid of 7, 8 and documented gout episodes. Four yeah, episodes have I, been documented. I will definitely discuss and offer urate loading therapy in this patient. In such a patient, you will offer. Yeah. Between allopurinol and febrizostat. Uh, so, allopurinol is very safe. Uh, it's a longer uh, study drug. Uh, the safety profile is very good. There is definitely a risk of uh, 10 or Steven Johnson syndrome. I usually start with 50 or 100 milligrams and I tell the patient if you develop any rash, you should stop the drug immediately. Their Asians are slightly more prone to 10. I have seen two 10s uh, with allopurinol, both not initiated by me. Uh, and uh, one died. Very bad. I have never seen such bad Steven Johnson syndrome. He was initiated from outside and uh, he kept on taking it despite the rash. This was before I became a rheumatologist. And second was a mild 10, which we picked up very early and stopped it. So if you start start allopurinol, start with 50 mg uh, or 100 mg, especially if the patient has CKD, never go above 50 mg, half tablet of 100 mg. You don't want to lower the uric acid very fast because if you have to go to the mastic, then you will get Your job is not to lower the uric acid from 9 to 5. Uh, in one week, you don't need to do that. The problem with febuxostat, it brings down the uric acid very fast. So it doesn't matter if you are in this phase, but if you are in this phase, it will precipitate an another attack. So febuxostat brings down the uric acid very fast. Adopurinol brings it down very slowly. Febuxostat is a wonderful drug, uh, but there was some cardiovascular safety raised on it. But the recent data says it is not that bad a drug and the cardiovascular safety profile is not that bad. But I like older is better. Uh, febuxostat is very, very pharma driven also. Even in US, uh, when Febuxo, whenever new thing is launched, na, it is pushed very hard because the price is very high. Mm -hmm. So there is this always this thing because febuxostat always is pharma driven. While aeropyrinol, no pharma is interested. I don't even know who Xyloric belongs to. And I don't think even that company cares to market Xyloric because there is automatic marketing. So I always prefer allopurinol, but if you are very concerned, you can start febuxostat, but start in 20 mg, go very slow and see where, where you want the uric acid to be reaching below 6 at some point and keep it below 6 with minimal dose. So if you are getting control with 100 mg of uh, allopurinol, you don't have to make it 200 mg. But go slow. You can you can recheck uric acid every three four weeks and the target time. uric acid is below six below, below six, six because actually. uric acid crystals get deposited at six point eight or so so we keep a safety margin and keep it below six if you have lot of tophies and you want the tophies to dissolve we try to target it below five 
What about we discussed about gout? What about and you know stones? you know sir, the funny part? The target of gout is not to reach the uric acid target. The target of gout is to not have an attack. Give you just a perspective of why it is so important to understand that concept. Uh, so even most most doctors in the world get gout wrong, and that is a very very sticky point for gout people. I uh, had a consultation with a 93 year old patient in UK. This patient had CKD with a creatinine of 2.3. Uh, this patient was a chronic tophaceous gout. I am not sure if you have seen tophaceous in your life. There are very bad lumps of uric acid all over the body. This patient had uric acid reserve in the body. Uric acid blood may come out of tophaceous acid. Thoda uric acid blood may come out of gout precipitate. Hota hai. So this patient was virtually having one attack every day. मतलब अटैक हो रहा था कंटिन्यूस सोलन जॉइंट्स तो थे सो देयर वर एट लीस्ट 10 सोलन जॉइंट एंड ऑलमोस्ट आपको लगेगा कि रूमेटॉइड है इफ यू आर नॉट लुकिंग एट द टोफस एंड यू आर नॉट अवेयर ऑफ द हिस्ट्री गाउट हैज वेरी क्लासिकल एक्सरे पिक्चर इन द एडवांस स्टेज यू हैव लॉट ऑफ इरोजंस एंड ओवर हैंगिंग सो देयर वाज नो डाउट अबाउट द गाउट सो ही 92 इयर ओल्ड इन यूके डोंट डिपेंड ऑन देयर सन्स एंड डॉटर्स बट इफ यू आर इन सो मच पेन द डॉटर यूज्ड टू कम एवरी डे टू होम He used to microwave one food and he used to barely able to eat it because he was not movable. So he came to me like this. We discussed because CKD hai. Uh, so I was not very keen to give cabuxostat because cabuxostat brings down the uric acid very fast and he will have. He was having so much attacks that he was already inflamed. So that was out of option. I was sure that we may have to give him allopurinol at some point, but when you have a CKD, you can go up to allopurinol 600 milligram even in CKD patient, which is another myth. So I had that in mind, but because it's CKD, you can't start with more than 50 milligram, and that was not the point. The first thing was to douse the fire. You know what I did? I gave him gout mil or colchicine, 0.5 milligram once a day. I don't did not give him. Twice a day also, I gave him once a day because he was comorbid. He was on multiple drugs. So I was a bit scared. Ninety-two year old. He is not bothered whether he'll survive or not. He is only bothered about one thing. I four days will survive. Karun, I should not have a gout attack. Like well, well taken. Point well taken. And said out of question. Uh, he was, I think, diabetic or what? And ninety-three year old. I was not very keen to give a high dose of steroids. So I said, he let. Let's give you gout mil 0.5 milligram. Gout mil is technically not clear by kidneys. I could have given 0.5 milligram BD, but I said that 92 year old has diarrhea, diarrhea will happen. UK me you can't access rheumatologist very suddenly. So I said that 0.5 milligram low. Give me a call after two weeks. You can't come to me after two weeks because rheumatologist appointment is after three months. Two weeks later, there was a letter in my name. Doctor Nidesh Nolka is the best. Ever doctor in NHS, I strongly recommend him, and this went to the whole of my department. And so he was in UK International Health Services. That's so it. So he did not get attack with only 0.5 milligram of colchicine. I did not give him allopurinol. I did not give him anything. I later started him on 50 milligram allopurinol, but he never. Will tolerate allopurinol, and his uric acid never went below 7.5 or 8. But he never had an attack in one year of my follow-up. And actually, I made gout mil 0.5 milligram alternate day also. And he did not still have an attack, and he could do everything independently. So it's not about lowering the uric acid; it's about making them pain-free. There is no. specific advantage of lowering uric acid in gout patients we lower the uric acid to prevent an attack there is some evidence that if you have ckd maybe and gout ckd and gout not ckd with hyperuricemia you have ckd with hyperuricemia in every patient if you have ckd patient who has been having gout attack There is some evidence that if you lower the uric acid below six, the creatinine will stabilize. This is not evident in pure CKD with hyperuricemia who don't have gout. Only with gout. Only CKD with gout. There is some evidence that if you lower the uric acid to a target level, then the kidney will stabilize. 
but in all guidelines you will read it again and again that if you bring uric acid below a target level your quality of life will improve due to no attack or reduced attack but there is no talk of any other advantage besides doing that so the message here is of course that we have to de prescribe uric lowering therapy and go scientifically about that and use colchicine for a longer period if necessary without any fear uh before uh, colchicine maximum duration uh i'll give you the background of that question long term colchicine has sometimes been implicated in a celiac sprue like illness in peripheral neuropathy yeah. in myopathy etc so there are some bone marrow suppression probably there are some uh, side effects of long term colchicine so what what care colchicine you... can be given lifelong in a disease called familial mediterranean fever okay. so it's not a bad drug by any means and it is very important because it prevents amyloidosis in those patients we have mf fmf in india but not that common as per as the mediterranean disease coming to gout patients you don't need it for more than 3 to 6 months if you have treated gout well if you have a patient with gout tophus jab tak tophus dissolve nahi hota i will keep on giving colchicin it may take 3 years it may take 5 years it may take 10 years so i think i have patients uh, on colchicin for 3 years also because what will happen uh, their uric acid goes below 6 the tophus dissolves it releases more uric acid the uric acid goes above 6 it will precipitate an attack so you keep on giving colchicin till you have all visible tophus dissolve or 3 to 6 months till all attacks subside so that is the usual thing i talk about okay uh, i think we have this has been a prolonged gout discussion we will go to the second topic and come back if necessary to something else so uh, the other disease that uh, it can be given life it should be given life long if you are sure about gout nobody takes it life long uh, uh, very very quickly yeah so all three were same question uh, so one another problem is that people vegetarian people especially become very sad because uh, of or i i think diet is overrated uh, very very overrated because once gout starts no amount of diet can help you but the reason to speak about diet is their comorbid condition i never make it a point to give the stigma to the patient never ever give a stigma to patient even chronic alcoholics don't develop gout easily so for gout you need genes to develop a gout so gout genes are basically genes which make you either an over producer or an under executor so your 80% of genetic risk of gout i'm not talking of hyperuricemia i'm talking of pure disease gout. okay please be very careful in confusing the two things it's a tricky concept so 80% of the risk is defined by your genetics so once gout starts now there is hardly ever any patients who will be uh, controlled by addressing the lifestyle except except somebody who is on cyclosporin somebody who is on cyclosporin for an autoimmune condition or a patient with psoriasis who has lot of skin issues and the skin turnover is high or a patient with cedar b12 deficiency usually all gout patients are lifelong patients it's just that they may go 10 years without an episode and especially if you have given them treatment there are many gout patients of mine who got 10 attacks in a month i gave them colchicin for 6 months and uh, uric acid for 6 months they came to me then they did not come for 5 years because you control them so well that for another 5 years without drugs also they survive so that's a different story but uh, other what about non vegetarian food ha, so other, but, yeah so this food thing is basically uh, overrated only thing i'd say avoid what you should avoid generally sugars fructose is bad seafood seafood especially uh, a Shelfish. huge amount of seafood selfish in one go is bad the prawn prawn lobster organ meats organ meats i am not a non vegetarian so i am very bad at this but what i understand organ meats is pancreas liver those kind of stuff i think you get both pancreas both liver as a separate dish 
Yeah, even brain, bheja, bheja. even bheja and uh, I think even testicles have lost. So even mm-hmm. they are considered as uh, delicacies. So anyway, organ meats, high purine content, shellfish, which is prawns, crab, lobsters, high purine content. But you know what, sir? What if about you have controlled gout, gout huh? you can eat. Actually, even if you eat seafood once in a while, it won't matter. And you don't need to avoid red meat. You need to avoid red organ meat. What but about, uh, what about alcohol? Chicken breast and all that are okay. Uh, alcohol, uh, you can have 10 units of alcohol. The, what is the recommendation? Uh, recommendation one drop of alcohol WHO says is bad. Ah, sir, you are being very yeah. harsh. No, 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 no. This is this is WHO saying one drink is bad. The first drop of alcohol that you take starts causing trouble. So, you... But 14 units per week has been traditionally allowed by some. So people. I think uh, I think you can't take away alcohol from at least UK and USA people, and I see a lot of Indian people also. I say ki if you are having uh, alcohol on weekend, one or two packs is fine. In fact, if you if you ask me, even one glass of wine per day is not that bad. You'll just probably need 25 milligram of allopurinol data, but you'll enjoy life much better. So, but I think it's fine. So he, we only, know that we only, know that only thing is only thing is you should try to avoid alcohol during acute attack. But when you have acute attack, you can't get any Indians in the same way. You can't get any Indians in the same way. So, it doesn't matter. Gout is not a problem. Gout is not a problem. Once you stop having attack, if you have tofus, resolve the tofus, and then you can stop gout. But in, in the patient I described, the 92 year old, I haven't heard from him. I hope he's surviving, but uh, I, it will be lifelong. Because I can't give him too much allopurine. Okay, uh, we'll go to the next topic where the family physician probably has some relevance, I mean, has some role, and that is diagnosing rheumatoid arthritis. I'll stick to diagnosing first, and then maybe some bit of therapeutics. Uh, when should an alopa, uh, family physician think of rheumatoid arthritis earliest possible in the disease? Um, any joint which is swollen, red, tender, uh, you have any patient who is describing even attack the way I describe at the start, palindromic attack. Uh, you may have a palindromic attack which is six months apart, but slowly and slowly those attacks will get more frequent and more painful. So the usual history will be, Sir, pehle na saal mein ek do bar zor pooch ke laal ho jata tha, atak jata tha, par humne notice nahi kya, so chala gaya, ek do din pain ke lal leke. Phir dhere dhere agle saal mahine mein ek aad bar honne laga, to bhi humne dhyan nahi kya. अब मुझे हर दूसरे दिन होता है कभी शोल्डर में होता है कभी हैंड में होता है कभी नी में होता है उस दिन मैं शोल्डर ऊपर ही नहीं कर पाती हूँ उस दिन मेरा आर्म पूरा जाम हो जाता है उस दिन मेरा रिस्ट पूरा जाम हो जाता है उस दिन आई माय नी गेट्स टोटली स्टेफ आई कैन नॉट मूव आई कैन नॉट वॉक एंड इट इज इमेंसली पेनफुल दिस इज वन हिस्ट्री यू कैन गेट द सेकेंड काइंड ऑफ आर ए पेशेंट इज Suddenly you get a solen joint and within 6 to 12 weeks you will develop multiple solen joints. So there are these two kinds of history. The first history is slightly more common. Uh, but usually you will get patients only when they have frequent inflammation. So much so that you are able to see the inflammation. The, sec- the second type of patients who get solen joints uh, not in attack but the continuous thing will start having lot of early morning stiffness and night pain. Every patient with joint pain will say yes to early morning stiffness. Your question should be, how much early morning stiffness, how long early morning stiffness? That is not early morning stiffness. Sir, aadha ghanta lagta hai, haat dhoyne ko. I feel very, very stiff for 40 to 45 minutes. Thay baje uti hun, 10 baj jata hai, pura functional honi ko. That is uh, that is uh, rheumatoid probably, but uh, having said that, sir, most patients in India, uh, because of the easy availability of tests, get diagnosed uh, in a much earlier phase. In cities, in villages, anti-CCT is not easily available, so that delay happens because initially, first year of RA. You may be RF negative, but anti-CCP may be more than 500,000 or something like that. So, I will just come to this again. 
two forms of presentations of rheumatoid arthritis. The this is this is broadly. broadly. The first form is the one that is missed by us. The first form that is described, the palindromic presentation, that is asymptomatic, mono or uh, oligoarticular, less joints are involved in the first few months or maybe years. Palindromic is what we miss. The reason not to miss is that the earlier you start drug like methotrexate, the less destruction of the joints occurs, less deformities occur. Uh, the good thing about palindromic patients is it does not lead to joint destruction. But does it become like a standard rumor? So, arthritis? suppose if, if you are having one attack in a month or so, it, it will never ever lead to damage. I have one or two patients who are palindromic since last 10 years with NTCCP of 700. Uh, they are quite educated. So, I have given them a choice. You may not start the DMART right now because even after taking methotrexate, you are having one or two attacks a year and you may go into full plan phase of RA, but they are very far and few in between. So palindromic attacks don't lead to, but but there are some patients who have palindromic attacks with some continuous inflammation in some joint. So those joints destroy only. So you should be sure that this is pure palindromic before not offering treatment. But because we are not sure many a times, I offer treatment to everyone. Okay. So uh, palindromic is something we don't recognize. How many of us have diagnosed palindromic rheumatism uh, in, in our 10 year, 15 year career? Not many of us. So this is something that we probably are missing. Uh, sir, I think, again, what I'll say, most GPs have diagnosed palindromic. Okay. What happens is because they talk of joint pain, and RA factor anti-CCP has become a default option. So, okay. Even if they don't intend they, to label it, as not label it as palindromic, yeah. but they have labeled it as RA at least in some form with anti-CCP positive. Uh, most good GPs, those who are not tuned to this, but I, I see almost every GP. Ah, but if you are ordering only RA, you will miss because in most palindromic patients, RA is sometimes negative. It is anti-CCP which is positive. So just for the students here, two forms of blood tests are typically done for diagnosing rheumatoid arthritis. One is rheumatoid factor, which is less sensitive, less specific. And one is anti-CCP antibodies which is more sensitive earlier in the disease and more specific. False positives are less. So anti-CCP antibodies is the test to ask for, especially if you are thinking of palindromic or rheumatoid. Both. Do you, why do you ask for RA factor at all? Why do you waste money on no, rheumatoid There factor? are some patients who are just RA factor positive, anti-CCP negative. So that can happen? That can happen. I, I see at least one patient... But, don't uh, we have RA factor positive in a normal population? Uh, so, when I am talking of RA factor positive, first thing, I don't like latex. Latex, we have done a latex. Anybody has seen how a latex test is done? It's a very single screwed, screwed tray uh, where you just put the patient serum and you put a drop of NTRF sera and you see ki thoda agglutination ho and you give it positive. Very crude and it is uh, to lab it costs 5 rupees and it, uh, we used to do it in 10 rupees in our center because we thought ki even crude latex in good hands is good. So most of the times you should ask for a RA factor quantitative test uh, which is done by either turbidometry or nephilometry. So most good labs do it that way only but most peripheral labs do a latex is very cheap. Uh, uh, so I don't trust a latex because latex can be a lot of time false positive also because usually if you have agglutination thoda bhi gya, they tend to report it as positive. So it's all technician dependent. Uh, RA factor levels really inside me. So suppose if the levels, suppose the normal lab limit is 14. So first I see what the method was done. Latex may you don't have a normal level. You have a tight test. 1 is to 32, 1 is to 64. So even in latex, latex test, if you have reported a titer of 1 is to 250, 1 is to 300, it means it is significantly positive. Usually I will give importance to that. And if the RA factor is about 3 to 4 times the normal, then only I tend to give it significant. Otherwise I will always uh, question. But again, please, please, everything in medicine and more so in rheumatology is about clinical scenario. Don't try to go behind reports, you will hurt yourself in the long run. You will find rheumat 
you will find that rheumatologist there are people even rheumatologist ka sabse bada problem kya hai ki they are very demand friendly people demand demand reverse for disease modifying and kuch nahi samajh rahe hai na to hydroxychloroquine hum de dete hain many a times when i give with half and heart na i write it i am not convinced i might taper demands but many rheumatologists give it just like that way so uh, i recently saw a gynecologist who was started on methotrexate plus hydroxychloroquine plus leflunomide for a ra factor positivity ra factor was 200 200 ra factor i told you just right now if the ra factor is above 3 to 4 times normal it is significant but i kept on asking her history there was nothing in the history to suggest she has developed ra her ncct was negative but esr was about 50 60 so 60 i don't give importance to esr esr is not not done very well in india remember that fact it's a very labor intensive and low uh, low money test so that is the biggest problem sorry about being critical of so many things but you have to be aware of so many things and crp is where 6 7 maybe even 10 12 but i again don't follow crps and esr as long as they are not not very very high So we went and went. Only thing I could get from her history check that she has right knee OA since since let's say three four years. Thoda stiffness hai, thoda osteophytes tha, and clinically thoda crepitus tha. So this is a gynecologist whom I am seeing again after a year. He was given methotrexate, polyprex, and HCG one year back by a very good rheumatologist. Somebody whom I also adore. I said I don't agree. You don't have RA right now. You may develop RA later, but abhi mein demand nahi hai. One year down the line, also she is off demand, doing very well with it. So it's the clinical context. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'll go back to where we started. Promoted factor. You, if you order, you order with which test will you repeat? Anti CCT. No, no. What kind of promoted? Uh, no, I will say quantitative promoted factor is good enough. Mandatory. Uh, but but still most patients uh, in periphery do it at latex it doesn't matter i have the history with me i if i am confident na this is ra and rheumatoid factor even by latex is positive it is good enough no in fact if clinically the patient is ra you can start dm dmr demards even if the anti ccp is negative uh, in my practice 30% of my patients come into opt don't have any reports they have five swollen joints i label it as probable are i don't care about the reports they will be started on uh, whatever methotrexate or whatever they will be given low dose steroid in most cases because it's very cheap so remember this clinical diagnosis can determine demards more than anti ccp antibodies can determine demards so you have to Not wait for the anti CCP to become positive before you start. Eighty percent rheumatology patients in a rheumatology practice, the reports cannot be relied upon. Cannot be relied upon. We will discuss zero negative spondyl arthropathies. But what he is saying is, even if it is zero negative, like RA is negative and anti CCP negative. If clinically it is rheumatoid arthritis, you will start methotrexate uh, yeah, on clinical grounds alone. Okay. Uh, so once the GP has decided that this is clinically RA and has decided that uh, treatment should be given, can the GP start methotrexate? Yeah, very well. I think uh, all GPs are qualified to give. Uh, Low dose methotrexate is what we practice in rheumatology, and I think methotrexate is a wonderfully safe drug if you use it well. So if you start with a uh, five or seven point five milligram a week, along with folic acid, you are more than qualified to start. So and when I say GPs, I I even with without any offense, I am okay with even BAMS, BHMS, MBBS. It's far advanced to give an MD. Far far advanced to start methotrexate. You don't need uh, a rheumatologist to start that. So, if we start with say five milligram once a week, do we escalate? And how how do we escalate? So, our standard practice is uh, so we don't get mild rheumatoid in rheumatology. 
we we as a rheumatologist i always tend to get the worst one so my job is to give them 20 mg methotrexate minimum at some point so i will escalate to 20 mg bare minimum 15 to hum log chalu hi 10 se karte hain i don't start 10 in mumbai because ek do bar kya hua hai ki bahut severe mouth ulcer ho gaya fir bahut they they create a lot of trouble so i say ki it's not a hurry anyways the initial few weeks you have to depend on steroids and nsaids methotrexate the maximum effect starts taking after 2 to 3 weeks and the peak effect starts in 6 to 12 weeks we are not going to give the patient relief anyways with methotrexate so uh, if the patient is diabetic also and i will give a steroid and i will write a note to gp please control sugar i need to give a short course of steroids i'm starting methotrexate i am in a hurry i will start methotrexate injectable in 10 to 15 mg and i'll escalate to 20 to 25 mg i am not in a hurry i'll start with 2.5 mg 2 to 3 tablets a week and i'll go up to 6 to 8 tablets a week that is 15 to 20 mg a week but usually most patients i will go up to 15 to 20 unless there is lot of hair loss lot of nausea those kind of stuff or the blood counts are coming down okay so uh, for the family physician you can start with 2.5 mg bd every sunday or 5 mg od every sunday i think everybody should prescribe a 2.5 mg ka multiple to avoid the inadvertent daily use of uh, i have i have been scarred for life for two or three of my patients where my pharmacist did not read a error and uh, he had a new issue if that patient puts a case on me i will definitely go to jail <laughs> so i have stopped using 7.5 and 10 mg uh, i have i write 2.5 mg four tablets a week agar wo 2.5 mg roz bhi le lega na to wo marega nahi but agar wo 10 mg roz le lega the chances of dying is almost 20 30% if it's not picked up within 3 seconds uh, about folic acid we have been told that folic acid interferes with methotrexate treatment so what is the folic acid uh, therapy if I, i think it doesn't matter actually methotrexate is quite powerful anti folate drug and the mechanism of action as i told in the start we still don't know how methotrexate works it was working by pure anti folate mechanism and killing the overactive immune cells then uh, any kind of folate should have antagonizing i am actually not very critical i i say to take folic acid daily and slowly and slowly i try to make it weekly because i want to decrease the number of tablets in the patient so i feel 5 mg once a week is also fine some patients in india because many are vegetarians many are not taking veggies what happens if they are folate deficient na and if you give methotrexate without good loading dose of folic acid they will develop mouth ulcer so initially i used to give only uh, weekly folic acid and weekly methotrexate now when i start na i give daily folic acid and weekly methotrexate but after 3 4 months once the patient is stabilized i will make folic acid once or twice a week there are many rheumatologists who give a standard prescription lifelong of monday to saturday or monday to friday folic acid and saturday sunday methotrexate i don't like daily folic acid actually folic acid you require only 1 or 2 mg with me we are giving 5 mg daily every day so it's not me uh once you start methotrexate is that uh, is do you look for any remission of rheumatoarthritis you do you try to stop methotrexate we don't want a single swollen joint any swollen joint will get deformed so a good rheumatologist uh will not miss any swollen joint because if you suppose knee uh, miss a mild swelling in the knee that knee will go into early osteoarthritis and replace it uh, many a times i have seen that uh, because the patient is not complaining of much pain many rheumatologists tend to ignore some swollen joint uh, in a patient without any deformities i will be very aggressive even with a one swollen joint because that if i it's a 20 suppose it's a 22 year old female if she has a mild swollen knee even for 10 years she will go into a replacement or a very bad osteoarthritis by 35 and she will be left with lifelong knee pain so you don't want even a single swollen joint but sometimes it's not possible because you have exhausted the limit of drugs or the cost or the patient's capacity to spend has been exhausted but we don't like a single swollen joint uh, patient without deformities i am very aggressive in counseling and very aggressive in treating patient who has multiple deformities is very very difficult 
they are patients whose RA has not been treated well. You cannot make a chronically swollen or synovial hypertrophy or inflamed. Hai. So I accept somewhat inferiority also. So we have this, we have this target. Paradox. We have this target that not a single joint should be swollen. But in many old patients, it's not possible. There are always some joints which are swollen. So we accept. So once more pain. once you get all joints off swelling, when do you stop methotrexate? No, methotrexate is almost right. lifelong. Almost lifelong. Only thing is we can tone it down. So uh, uh, usually most our patients are not on methotrexate. They are on three or four. I will tone it down depending on the patient's suitability. So suppose if I am on let's say 20 milligram methotrexate and sulfasalazine 2 grams a day, patient is complaining a lot about pill. So sulfasalazine pill is very good. Patients hate it. But it's safer than methotrexate. And it is viable for pregnancy. So you have to see the context. So suppose if the patient is planning pregnancy, I have to take off methotrexate. I will keep on sulfasalazine and hydroxychloroquine. If the patient is complaining of hair loss and difficult pill to take, I will make SARS 1 gram a day. In covalent control. And I will tone down methotrexate to 15 milligram per week to decrease her hair loss. And I may give some hair vitamins. So it is always... Uh, Every th no RA patient is perfectly stable. Only 1% RA patients come once in 6 months. Baki all RA patients always have some itch and but. It's only that we give them more power in their hands that if you have a pain, take this on that particular day. If you have hair fall, take this. That's how we decrease the visit. But RA, especially, especially if 5-6 years have gone by without proper treatment, all RA patients need dose adjustment every 3-6 to six months. Depending on their can, can a family physician associate with a rheumatologist for a joint management of an RA patient in a in a very formal manner rather than just one phone call every week? Can it be done? Is it a practical thing? And should we attempt that? Because nobody's attempted that. I I I recommend only GPs to give. I have tried a lot to teach patients, but nobody takes it because Thankfully, in India, GPs are easily available and they give it in 50 rupees, which, which, is, which is again a good thing. So, most patients don't want to take it, but uh, again, the second problem is we don't have pre filled syringes. We have to suck it, take it, and it's not like diabetes, and once a week, everybody can afford. So, I think GPs are very important for any chronic diseases because the specialist will never be available. I am not easily available. I, I don't like to do practices where I call patient every 15 days. So I say you talk to your GP, minor issues, hoka, please go to your GP and ask them to call me. And I want patient to not come to me because it's costly when they come to me. It's much cheaper when they go to their GPs, provided that I have called them once in three, four months. And if they are okay and come in once in three, four months, and in between they go to their GP, I am absolutely fine. I want GPs to be part of their uh, therapy. I don't so want let, any Let me invite questions here. As a rheumatoid arthritis GP, what follow-up would you like to learn from the rheumatologist? when the patient comes to you for intermittent follow-up while going to the rheumatologist every four months? What are the things that you want clarified for you? Acute episodes of pain intermittently, how should they manage? How should they use NSAIDs for rheumatoid? We keep it at rheumatoid arthritis right now. Mm -hmm. or, or can you summarize for us how would you ideally want a GP to behave with the rheumatoid arthritis patients who you are treating principally? I am very sensitive about negative counseling and I think the GP should counsel the patient that very good treatment is available. Uh, think about options if you are not getting control because if you don't talk this to the patient, patient does not trust us. The moment we start giving expensive options, uh, we are very, very wary of taking those options. And the first thing in India is to say that it's a side effect hoga because it is expensive. Uh, and it comes from the fact that it is expensive. Because in UK, it is offered free of cost. Nobody talks about side effects. It's always talking of side effects because they don't want to take the drug because it is expensive. 
and nobody is sure of the effect. So first of all, counsel the patient. It's it may be lifelong. Don't use the word it is lifelong. You don't know how the history will progress, and you don't know what miracles can happen. And always be ready to take uh, say that I cured it. If the miracle happens, <laughs> take so, credit wherever take, possible. Take credit wherever possible. So what he's trying to say is negative counseling means Never. sometimes we generalists will tell the patient, okay, ये biologic मत लेना, TB हो सकता है. ये मत करना ये हो सकता है तो नेगेटिव काउंसलिंग इज दैट ट्राई टू बी यू हैव कंसर्न टॉक टू अस वी विल क्लेरिफाई इट फॉर यू यू हैव अ जेन्युन कंसर्न क्वेश्चन अस आई एम एब्सोल्युटली फाइन टू टेल व्हाई दिस शुड बी डन एंड दिस शुड नॉट बी डन सो फर्स्ट थिंग आई वांट फ्रॉम जीपी इज अवेलेबिलिटी बिकॉज आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू बी अवेलेबल ओके सेकंड थिंग आई वांट फ्रॉम जीपी इज टू मैनेज एन एक्यूट अटैक यू शुड बी एबल टू रियलाइज कि ये जॉइंट जाम हो गया आज शोल्डर हिल नहीं रहा इट हैज टू बी रोमेट सो यू शुड नो दैट आई दर गिविंग एन एक्चुअली एनसेड तो मैंने देख ही रखा होता है कि आपको सडन अटैक आया तो पेन ले लेना क्योंकि तीन चार महीने में एक अटैक तो आ ही सकता है बट वॉट विल हैपन की वेन द अटैक इज वेरी सीवियर सपोज द शोल्डर अटैक इज वेरी सीवियर यू टूक वन इटोरिक ऑक्सीड वन आर में कुछ भी रिलीफ नहीं आया यू शुड बी रेडी टू गिव अ ट्वेंटी मिलीग्राम ऑफ वाई सोलर इट्स तीन चार मंथ में रोमेटोड आर्थाइटिस का पेशेंट 20 मिलीग्राम वाइसोलोन का एक दो टैबलेट एक दो दिन ले लेगा ना इट वोट मैटर बट यू विल बी एबल टू गिव दैम ड्रामेटिक पेन रिलीफ ओके सो मेनी ऑफ माय पेशेंट्स हू कंटिन्यू टू हैव पैलिंड्रोमिक अटैक हैव देयर नॉर्मल प्रिस्क्रिप्शन एंड आई हैव रिटर्न टू लाइन्स लेट से नेप्रोक्सिन फाइव हंड्रेड ट्वाइस अ डे इफ यू हैव पेनफुल ज्वाइंट विथ सडन पेन एंड वन मोर लाइन आई गिव इट टू वेरी रेस्ट्रिक्टेड पेशेंट्स वाइसोलोन 40 मिलीग्राम हाफ टैबलेट भयंकर दर्द होगा तो बट दैट भयंकर दर्द शुल बी अ जॉइंट विच गेट स्टिफ एंड जाम बिकॉज देन इफ यू राइट भयंकर दर्द होगा तो वो हेड के लिए भी ले लेंगे ओके दिस टेक्स टाइम बट इट्स नॉट दैट डिफिकल्ट बाई थ्री टू सिक्स मंथ ना और बाई टू मोस्ट पेशेंट आर आर ए पेशेंट फॉर टेन टेन ईयर्स वो लोग को पता है वेन टू टेक इट एंड वेन टू बट यू हैव टू टीच दैन ओके यू डोंट हैव टू एक्चुअली गो टू जीपी फॉर दैट बट दे विल कम टू यू बिकॉज यू आर इजिली अवेलेबल वाई से की मैंने बोला भी होगा ना वाइसोल फोर्टी मिलीग्राम हाफ टेबलेट ले लेना दे विल स्टिल कम टू यू सो यू यू शुड बी एबल टू यूज इट ओके स्टीरोड इफ यू यूज इट इंटरमीडियंटली यू विल बी एबल टू मेक द पेशेंट्स लाइफ मच बेटर इफ यू फील की दस बारह ज्वाइंट सोलन है देन आई नीड टू सी इट बट यू कैन ऑलवेज गिव वन आई एम की नॉट एटी एम की वन ट्वेंटी एम की जस्ट बी वेरी की देर इज नो इन्फेक्शन है ना कोई ऐसा नहीं है कि आप यूटीआई सीवियर लेके बैठे हो लंग इन्फेक्शन लेके बैठे हो शायद उससे फ्लेयर हुआ है विच इज वेरी अनकॉमन मोस्ट आर ए पेशेंट गेट फ्लेयर स्पॉन्टेनियसली सडन एक दिन आर ने डिसाइड किया आज मेरे को फ्लेयर होना है वो फ्लेयर हो जाएगा यू कांट डू मच अबाउट इट योर शॉर्ट कोर्स ऑफ पीरियड इज फाइन सो दैट आई नीड फ्रॉम यू थर्ड थिंग इज मेनी अ टाइम्स दे विल हैव इन्फेक्शन सो दे विल कम टू यू इट कुल बी अ माइल्ड यू आर टी आई डोंट थिंक दैट जस्ट बिकॉज पेशेंट इज ऑन मिथोट्रेक्सेट Need need clarithromycin or 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 something like that. Methotrexate is no longer considered an immunosuppressor. We consider it an immunomodulator in the doses we use it. Mild infection में now there is a big uh, there are studies which say कि you probably don't need to even stop it. We still stop it कि भाई कौन पंगा लेगा बंद कर दो पांच छह दिन के लिए. But mild UTIs, mild infections, you don't need to stop it. You have to treat it like a normal person. So, if you think it's viral, antibiotics are not treated. Don't give antibiotics just because patient is on methotrexate. Okay, you are unnecessary giving it. Don't start doing blood cultures for a simple urea urea because the patient is on methotrexate, because the patient is on sulfa salicin, because the patient is on leflunomide. Maybe check a CBC. If any counts to fall not done, then maybe I have to decrease the methotrexate. Check a CBC to rule out dengue malaria because if it's dengue malaria, then I have to stop methotrexate because the liver uh, enzymes may suddenly. Yeah. But generally, mild infections you don't need to stop them. And learn to know the intensity of immunosuppression. So methotrexate, sulfasalazine, hydroxychloroquine, the immunosuppression or immunomodulation is very low. Okay. If you have steroid. It automatically becomes a slightly higher grade immunosuppression. Steroid with diabetes patient. So diabetics, so anyways, uncontrolled diabetes is so worse than any uh, methotrexate. 
So that context you are much well aware of. So if you have a patient who is on a small dose of fever plus diabetic, I will be a bit more wary of some infection. I will be a bit more wary of blood culture. If the patient is on a biologic, especially an anti-DNF or rituximab or an anti-IL-6, then I will be more wary of doing a culture and using antibiotics. And anti-TNF means there are three types. There is Vitanasat, which is considered a not so great, bad biologic because the safety data is very good. And there is Infliximab, which is considered a slightly more better suppressor. And then there is anti-IL-6, Tocinizumab, which everybody knows because of COVID. And there is Rituximab. Rituximab is given once in 6 to 12 months. So in cases में आपको थोड़ा सा very रहना पड़ेगा specially specially toxicity why any reason no why why I am specifically picking out toxicity you know what is toxicity it is anti I'll fix so they don't mount an inflammatory response anti DNF sepsis वाले patient को fever आ जाएगा rituximab sepsis वाले वाले को भी शायद fever आ जाएगा लेकिन टॉसिलिजुमैब पे पेशेंट डिप्रेड इतना फास्ट होता है कभी-कभी और फीवर ही नहीं आता बिकॉज़ आईएल6 इज योर इन्फ्लेमेटरी रिस्क सो व्हेन यू गेट फीवर योर आईएल6 विल बी रेस्ट बिकॉज़ योर फीवर इज मोस्टली कॉज्ड बाय आईएल6 एंड योर सीआरपी एंड ईएसआरस आर रेस्ट बिकॉज़ ऑफ आईएल6 बीइंग रेस्ट एंड लीवर प्रोड्यूसिंग सीआर सो आईएल6 इज अ वेरी प्रो इन्फ्लेमेटरी साइटोकाइन सो बट अगेन इन इंडिया फाइंड द पेशेंट ऑन टॉसिलिजुमैब and coming to GP is very, very rare, yeah. very rare. So it's, unless and until I am not, in, in such scenarios, pick up a phone and call me. I think that is much better. Uh, again, going back to monitoring by GPs, hmm. patient is on methotrexate or sulfasalazine or hydroxychloroquine. And uh, what blood test, if not, for, if not done by patient, should be done regularly? CDC, SGBT, creatinine is more than enough. Uh, you should know what, her, what their baseline creatinine and baseline SGBT was. SGBT less than 1.5 to 2 times elevation is acceptable. So, for example, if the upper limit is 40, till 80 it is acceptable. But suppose if your WBC and neutrophil count is going to, let's say, 3,500, I will just decrease a bit of methotrexate. I will not stop it. And I will ask the patient to repeat a CBC in 2 weeks. Okay? Most of my patients whose WBC count is 3,500 never actually have an infection. So, don't get too worried about slightly low WBC count. Even 3,000 pay hai patient. And these are patients whose R is only that, that way their counts never go above 4,000. But they are doing well on low dose demand. So CBC, SGPT and creatinine. Unless until there is a scenario to do something more, these three tests are more than enough. Every three months? Uh, I take the liberty to do every six months also in very stable patients. Uh, in UK, we used to do every month, but now there is Western data to say once in three months is fine. So, medical legally, once in three months, if I am a calling a very stable patient, once in six months, I will say, three months later, CBC or SGPT, I do creatinine only if they are requiring too much of answer. But if they are requiring too much of answer, they will not be called in once in six months. They need something more. So, usually, I ask for only CBC and SGPT in once in three months, and once in six months, CBC, creatinine, ESR, CRP, I just to switch whether I can see some inflammation or not. But again, I take a clinical call. So if you have to save money, I only do CBC, SGBT and creatinine because for these patients, money is a big concern because they are spending almost 3-4,000 every month. Oh, every month? Yeah. Uh, we do just a pre-methotrexate or just with methotrexate chest x-ray to document IIV or rule out any active infection because it is, uh, it is uh, mandatory by guidelines. But if you frankly ask me, if you are in good clinical hands, chest x-ray is not absolutely mandatory. But I will do in all my patients because I need a baseline. Suppose they develop an interstitial lung disease two years down the line, I need to know whether it was a pre-existing one or in Okay. Uh, USG abdomen is not a good test for liver ecotexture. If you are trying to diagnose cirrhosis, you are already too late. Uh, and methotrexate and fibro scans are also overrated. Actually, you don't need it. Now, there is a very good nature article published just around 10 days back 
where they have said ki unless and until the uh, enzymes are elevated more than 2 to 3 times of upper limit uh, on a consistent basis doing fibro scans or doing repeated scans is of useless and create unnecessary fear so an unnecessary anxiety and anyways if your enzymes are 2 to 3 times of the upper limit i will withdraw methotrexate so and that is not a very common scenario uh, i have two family members who are on methotrexate for more than 8 years one has taken it for 30 years this is it He is asking, when do you escalate methotrexate from five milligrams? I milligrams? I will always go up to fifteen mg because most of the times I see patients which are very severe, and then if if the patient is doing very well for three to six months, I will try to taper it down. But most uh, RA patients I see uh, require at least ten to fifteen milligrams of methotrexate per week. Uh, two to two point five to five milligram is virtually never helpful in any any RA patients that I see in my routine practice. Uh, maybe mild ones, very mild ones, but hardly ever it is useful. I give 2.5 to 5 milligram methotrexate only when the higher doses are not useful. So suppose the patient is on leptinamide 20 milligram per day and is not controlled, and she had lot of intolerance to methotrexate 10 mg. The methotrexate ka 10 percent patients with the biggest problem is severe nausea. So much so that this day unko unko itna nausea hota hai ki do tin dose ke baad aisa lagta hai na ki Saturday aa raha hai to mere ko nausea chalu hoga. It is that nauseating at times, and you get some discomfort in the abdomen. What patients is they? This day methotrexate lete ho na, uske agle din kuch agpata lagta hai, headache hota hai, giddiness hota hai, pure din putrid feeling hota hai. If that is the case, then I give a lower dose in a split dose, 2.5 milligram, two to three days a day. Some patients have stopped taking RA treatment because of methotrexate nausea. So you should be very clear that if this drug is not working. उसको हम दूसरा दवाई देंगे या इसको बंद कर देंगे बट स्टिल आई पुश क्योंकि आप ढाई एम ले सकते हो कि आप पांच एम ले सकते हो शायद आपको सूट हो जाएगा आपका डिजीज कंट्रोल नहीं हो रहा है प्लीज आप ये ट्राई करके देखो बिकॉज मिथोटेक्सेड इज वंडरफुली इफेक्टिव इवन इन लो डोजेस एंड स्पेशली वेन यू आर कम्बाइनिंग विद अदर ड्रग्स दैट्स वाई यूल सी एवरी रोमेटोलॉजिस्ट कैसे भी मिथोटेक्सेड दो सबकट दो ढाई एम दो साढ़े पांच एम दो साढ़े सात एम दो पर देने की कोशिश करो If you have failed and the patient is going to run away, then probably instill some confidence and then think about. Uh, I'm stopping rheumatoid arthritis here. If you have a question. If the patient gets pregnant on methotrexate, it's our failure. First thing. It's a very tricky situation. Uh, the abnormalities uh, which can happen on methotrexate are quite serious, uh, and uh, you really don't know how to counsel these patients. So I recently got a very young, very highly educated patient who had taken methotrexate, and uh, two weeks back, the last dose was taken two weeks back, and she had a pregnancy test positive. Let's say two days. Okay. So obviously, uh, the test was implanted inside. नहीं पूछा तो इट इज क्रिमिनल so i always ask if you are planning pregnancy you have to tell me 3 months in advance if you plan pregnancy of methotrexate i may have to abort it now there is some evidence that if you have taken methotrexate in not very high doses which we don't take very high doses like lutein or we give only 10 to 16 mg and suppose the pregnancy came positive previous guideline was to abort the now they say observe If the patient is keen to observe, which lot of folic acid, which you should not anyways give, make it daily folic acid. Try to do scanning, and at the end, it's it's your first major scan. The first anomaly major scan is 20, but at 12 weeks, if the ultrasound is fairly okay, with the scan, the the scan, your markers are no any major. And the Patient is being taken into confidence. There is very low chance of an anomaly because there are midline anomalies, which are usually picked up by you. You may ask to continue pregnancy. 
बट इट्स अ वेरी फ्रीकी सिनेरियो बिकॉज वो नौ महीना निकालना आई हैव ओनली फेस विथ वन और ट्वाइस one time the pitcher got fell for water this is my second case and i don't think this patient will stay with me because he is from jaipur he came for a holiday and asked me left him not river bed i told them ki you don't abort it right now uh, you give it so you at least see whether the gestational sac aaya hai ki nahi because we had not checked that kya pata gestational sac ke abort ho gaya tha that person at least did not have the gauge ki maine abort ki it got self abort so the other question about part was also already answered If the patient wants to get pregnant, and you have to stop with the exit, then sulfasalazine and he said hydroxychloroquine are considered safe. Sulfasalazine, hydroxychloroquine, cyclosporine, and azathioprine are absolutely compatible with in all trimesters. In all trimesters, uh, NSAIDs uh, are compatible up to for third, up I mean, first, up to second. Third, but even in third trimester, you may have to give NSAIDs because some patients cannot afford biologics, which are safe in pregnancy. some biologists are safe in pregnancy and you have to give them steroids and NSAIDs with no risk but the risk is not very high it's just the premature ductal article growth okay. but i have not seen it frankly speaking even in the worst of our our patients i have seen to one patient who delivered yesterday she never came to me after third month of pregnancy she kept on taking naproxen 500 mg daily omnacortil vicodone 5 mg daily sulfasalazine 1 g daily hcq 300 mg once a day And in my paper, I clearly written try to taper the steroid and NSAID, and we will review in seven months. So I then usually say you come after seven months. There is not much to review. If you kept on taking it, so if you are a perfectly healthy girl child of I think sixteen, seventeen point eight kg, the the gynecologist called me. Say, Can you continue with breastfeeding? Breastfeeding, man, I said, yeah. Pregnancy will lead. Pregnancy will lead. Yeah, so breastfeeding, man, so please go by me. Yeah. एंड सेट दो I am not most rheumatologist. I want to save costs. Uh, two three things. First of all, HCQS toxicity happens after a cumulative dose of one thousand gram per day. Usually, usually, unless you are a CKD patient, we are very good at not giving very high doses of HCQ. You will not see us giving beyond three to four milligram per kg per day. So that is approximately two hundred to three hundred milligram in most patients. in such patients you reach 1000 g per day after 7 years of usage i think 1000 gram and 7 right. years ha huh. huh. so it takes around 7 to 10 years so usually i will say yearly uh, hcqs yearly ophthal review uh, after 5 years in initial 3 4 years you won't see me because it increases the cost for the patients without any particular use second problem most ophthalmologists don't have the equipment to detect early hcqs toxicity the equipment costs 3 to 4 crore rupees and the test of that thing in mumbai is 5000 rupees for every time and they ask you to do every 3 monthly what do you ask to see fundus uh, ha sd oct spectral dominance uh, optical coherence tomography or fundus autofluorescence or electro retinography So all these three things, the machines are very expensive. Ninety-nine percent ophthalmologists in Mumbai don't have this. They just see the fundus. Fundus changes due to HCQs are very late. So if you are anyways doing that, so हम लोग medical legally save होने के लिए बोल दे, but in my heart of heart, it's not useful. So what I write now, I have written a standard word in my letter. Uh, in patients on long-term HCQs, kindly consider doing. perimetry testing because that is cheap and easily available but again it is late to detect or electroretinography with fundal autofluorescence or sd oct if feasible for detecting early hcqs toxicity but this advice is only given to long term hcqs patients i am not a big fan of hydroxychloroquine and ra because most ra patients i see are very severe and hydroxychloroquine alone does not work in them most severe ra patients i see are at least on 2 to 3 demarts any which ways and we think that methotrexate plus sulfasalazine or methotrexate plus lefno is far better so why to give them an additional hydroxychloroquine this issue of hydroxychloroquine comes in patients with lupus 
where hydroxychloroquine is a lifelong drug because it has far far better benefit in those patients definitely yes but frankly speaking if you ask me to count on my fingers whether i have seen hcqs retinopathy i have seen one retinopathy clear hcqs retinopathy severe enough to cause significant loss of vision in last 10 years because we are very cautious and because hcqs is very safe first thing we don't use hcqs in ckd patients hcqs in creatinine of 1.2 and egfr of 50 200 per day is also wrong Actually, they need only 200 once a week or twice a week. So, I don't use it only. Because it's useless drug to use in those patients. So, even in my lupus patients, I will probably make it once a week or discontinue at CQS because CKD patients can have a very higher chance of uh, maculopathy developing at a much lower hydroxychloroquine dose. And the third thing, I stop at CQS in more, most RA patients in one or two years, even if I have given it. So, it's only the question of SLE patients. One bullseye maculopathy I have seen in 10 years. I have seen 10 to 12 patients being stopped because their fundus autofluorescence or SDOCT detected some issues and we, we could not medically continue it. But the bigger problem in Mumbai city, Mumbai city is very underdeveloped in anything advanced in most of the things. In ophthalmology, the problem is most of the times the SDOCT and fundus autofluorescence in Mumbai city are tend to over diagnose HCQ retinopathy and that becomes a big problem for us because you are totally eliminating a only available drug for which there is no alternative substitute in India yes, in lupus patient. So all these things create a lot of confusion. So I say after 5 years, if you have fundus autofluorescence, if you have to stop it, then you have to stop it. अगर मेरे को बहुत जरूरी है तो मैं उसको एक, एक मेरा बहुत क्लोज ऑप्शनोलॉजी से उसको एक डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन पूछूंगी तू बोलेगी तो बंद कर देंगे और तू बोलेगी कि चला सकते हो तो मैं चला दूंगा एंड आई ट्रस्ट हर इनसे सो दिस इज हाउ आई ऑपरेट इन माय प्रैक्टिस दिस इज माय कंफर्ट जोन ओके अमर यू हैड अ क्वेश्चन एससीक्यू और रेटिनोपैथी इज ओवररेटेड इफ अ पेशेंट हैज रेड ऑन इंटरनेट कि एससीक्यू से आंख खराब होती है पांच दिन एससीक्यू एस हुआ ब्लरिंग ऑफ विजन दैट इज गूगल डर दैट इज नॉट एससीक्यू एस प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट इवन इन फर्स्ट 2 टू 4 इयर्स very 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 uncommon unless and until you have given HCQS in very high doses Amar. to develop retinopathy. Indian drug is potency is just probably below methotrexate. It does not work that well as methotrexate but sometimes it works much better than methotrexate also. And uh, uh, GI intolerance, hypertension and weight loss are three things which is a bit tricky. But I have many patients on methotrexate plus leptinamide. Uh, the biggest problem is hair loss. Yeah, a lot of hair loss when you combine these two drugs. This is the only rate limiting thing. But you will see almost all rheumatologists giving methotrexate plus leptinamide to their severe RA patients. Almost 20% of my patients will be on that combination. I have started becoming very cautious. I, have, I give 15 mg methotrexate and I start leptinamide 10 mg alternative. Hair loss, GI toxicity, WGC count low to nahi ho hai. But many rheumatologists don't fear 15 mg methotrexate weekly plus leflunomide 20 mg daily. Very standard description even in UK where biologics are easily freely available. Sure. So the guideline is to start combination therapy. Uh, I like combination of low dose steroids plus methotrexate beginning you may use hcqs you may not use hcqs low dose steroids the safety low dose i mean 4 to 4 to 5 to 7.5 milligram of uh, bisolone or prednisolone or 4 milligram of uh, methyl prednisolone which is equivalent to 6 milligram of uh, no 6 milligram of uh, bisolone so methyl prednisolone into 1.5 milligram is uh, equivalent to so methyl prednisolone into 1.5 milligram is equal to your prednisolone dose. So 4 milligram methyl prednisolone is equivalent to 5 milligram of uh, prednisolone is equivalent to 6 milligram of teflazoport. This is how it is. Teflazoport is again pharma driven. Uh, uh, so it is not long acting drug. So if you have to give teflazoport, you can't sometimes survive with just a morning dose. You may have to give a BD dose or an evening dose. Uh, when I need a longer lasting activity, I prefer prednisolone or methyl prednisolone because it's a long acting drug. Only those may suffice. So 4 to 7.5 milligram equivalence 
is very good at the start it can lead to faster remission you can lead to faster action of methotrexate it's brilliantly cheap it's very wonderful your patient will be happy you can't ask the patient to wait for 6 weeks when they have 10 colon joints so uh, i think low dose steroids is underused i tell patient i am giving you steroids i will stop it in 6 to 8 weeks which i do in most of my patients but i think it's underused it's uh, over feared it's a wonderful drug to start with in rheumatoid you may add hydroxychloroquine or sars especially if you are having a patient who has had a difficult course and i am anticipating that this is going to be a difficult ra patient but it doesn't matter Three to four weeks, I start taking steroids. If I still feel activity, I will add sulfasalazin later. Anyways, I tell patients that don't expect uh, complete relief by six months because RA we go very slowly. I tell patients that I can go quickly. I can go to the direct dosage level. I can go to the side effect. I can go slowly. I will go a little bit. I will have a little pain, but I will have a little effect. So I will say, yes, sir, you will go slowly. Okay, 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 you will What mouth ulcer? How do you manage mouth ulcer? Mouth ulcers. If it's severe, I hold methotrexate for three four weeks. I pump them with B complex vitamins. Methotrexate rash is. I don't think I have. I can actually say that methotrexate rash is a common phenomenon. But if you have a clear temporal history, I'll stop it and I'll ch re challenge it one more time. If it happens again, I'll stop it. Sulfasalazine rash is very common. Yeah, uh, and I always mention not sulfa allergic, and I and sulfa I have always my article always mention pros and cons and articles given. Where my article mentions that if you have sulfa sala, if you have rashes, you have to inform us. We will ask you to stop certain drugs, and sulfa salazine will be considered the biggest culprit. Okay. 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 Okay.